Hello there, this is Roberto Matthews with another quick tip. Today we're going to go over CSS Crossfade Gallery with no JavaScript required. I've been looking everywhere like I normally do and I couldn't find a good video for it so I figured I'd kind of pitch in. So let's start out with a nice little wrapper. And in that wrapper we're going to put a gallery. Okay, so that's basically all we need except we're going to go ahead and style the gallery and everything. So let's go ahead and style the gallery. And I got all my styles right here for you. The gallery itself is doesn't have any height to it because we don't have any height for our gallery. And let's put this all in a wrapper. And then our wrapper is going to be max width also. And then we're going to give it a border of a thin red solid. And we're going to margin, of course. And a padding of 20. Okay. So now we have the padding and everything. We have it responsive, but of course, we don't have anything in our div. So we're going to need a little bit of dummy information just to kind of fill it up. So we're going to get an image and I'm using Emmet, by the way, if you're not sure what Emmet is, just, you know, search Google and there's going to be great information about it. So we're just going to put a, we're going to place a kitten in there. And our kitten is going to be 600 by 300. Just like that. Nice little cute kitten. And we're going to give it a simple style here. And you, you can put this in the CSS, but I'm just going to style it here since the style will only apply to this image since we're going to get it out of the way. So we're going to get our uh, style of uh, width 100%. And now our div is going to be completely responsive, just like we want it. Okay. So now we want to get that image out of the way. So we're going to give it a, an opacity of zero. And now we have our background, which is sky blue. And it's still responsive, just like we want it. OK, so now that that part is done, that's basically all we need. Now we just need to add our pictures for our animation. So. What we're going to do is we're going to give it a we're going to start out our keyframes and we're going to call it fader. And let's just do an example of the the keyframes here. So for example, we're just going to go from one from one keyframe to another keyframe here. But we're going to use two pictures. So in order to do that, we're going to have to do three keyframes obviously because we're going to put one in here and one in here okay so let's just go ahead and put that information in so i have my pictures that i'm going to use right here okay here are my pictures okay now um, actually, let's make this height here 200 because my pictures are 200 and it's still going to have that same uh, width and height here. So as long as you have a, an image that is constraining the background here or the, the borders, you should be just fine. And uh, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out these two these pictures here so let's go ahead and bring out the animation and the animation is called fader and we're going to make it last since it's only two pictures let's make it last 10 seconds eat 10 seconds the whole thing and let's just make it linear and infinite and finite just like that oh and we forgot to make this background <laughs> sorry so background The background is going to be URL. 
and we're gonna put the URL here like this and now it should work there we go so as you can see it's fading but it's taking up the entire time here and when we get back to one that's why we put it at the end again so that you don't have a jarring uh, difference here okay because if we do something like this where it's 0 to 100 and only 2 then when we loop let's put this over 5 seconds instead when we loop it's gonna basically jump to the beginning to loop so in order to do that the better way we add the same picture at the end that we did at the beginning so that when it gets to the end it's just gonna instead of jumping it's gonna look like it's a nice smooth transition okay so now let's do the same thing but we're gonna add a few more pictures and of course that requires a little bit of mathematics here because since we have all this happening um, we're gonna make this happen over the course of the hundred percent so it's really easy to do that all you're going to do is take your hundred percent and divide that by six and you get sixteen point six seven so we're gonna make our first one sixteen point six seven and then we just keep adding you're gonna do sixteen point six seven plus thirty three point four then 50.01 then 66.68 then 83.35 and that should bring us to about a hundred percent and now we have a nice smooth transition here now what we're also going to do is make sure that this instead of being 10 seconds we're going to multiply the amount of pictures you have times the amount of time you want each picture to stay so since i have six pictures and i want them each to stay for five seconds we're going to make it for 30 seconds so it'll be a nice smooth transition now let's say you want this transition to be um not so smooth like this you want it to stay a little bit and then fade. Well, in order to do that, instead of linear here, we're going to do what's called cubic bezier, which is a kind of a fancy way of talking about just using some sort of mathematics. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna use this little bezier code here to do a smooth transition. Now you can experiment with the cubicbezier.com and see what you'd like to do. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do here is the one, which is over here. And then I'm going to do one, zero, zero, one. There we go. Now what's going to happen is it's going to fade in, stay for a little bit, and then fade out. And that's what I want cubic bezier then 1001 so let's try that so 10001 so now when it goes it stays for a little bit and then suddenly fades and then stays fades and then stays and that's exactly what we want now if you want it to be a little bit smoother what I found and you're gonna to have to experiment what I found is doing 8 and 0.8 here kinda of does it a little bit smoother see a little bit a little smoother there very nice so now one thing remains we have everything set up perfectly, but it's still not responsive. See, if you go through here, it's not being responsive. The pictures aren't changing. So that's really simple. You're just gonna add one more criteria here to each one of these pictures. You wanna make sure that each one of these pictures, let's pull this out a little bit. Make sure that each one of these pictures
has a uh, uh, background oops background size is cover once that reloads you have background size cover on each one of these and now it's completely responsive and you have the nice flow so once again really simple all we did was we made our gallery we made our uh, placeholder right here we give it an opacity of zero so we can see right through it and then um, we went ahead and styled everything and gave as many pictures as we want don't forget to divide by how many you you want um, of course you don't want too many because then you're gonna keep adding but it shouldn't be too much of an issue and there you have it. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day.